watching um, African Origins of Human Civilization. I have a couple chalkboards here and I'll explain how I came up with those things. I'll also be suggesting a couple of books at the end of today's little session. This is just a mini session on how we all go back to African roots as a human population. And as James Baldwin said, there are no white people, there are just people who think they're white. And I really would challenge everyone listening to really consider those words of like, what do we really know about race and about our African origins? And how are we behaving in a way that connects with scientific reality versus social constructs of race? So I wanna share with you some of the things that have really convinced me that we all have African origins as a human race. And I really believe that we all go back to a black mother, meaning that we all go back to a woman in Africa, in the continent of Africa, and that race as a worldview has not existed for very long in human history. We are the human race. The human race does not meet the zoological requirements for separate races. Um, there are animal species that meet those requirements, but the human species does not meet that, those requirements. We are more similar than we are different. And this is kind of what has um, led me to that conclusion. So I have a couple boards back here. And for most of human history, this is about 200,000 years ago. So this is, this is human history ever since human beings had the same brain size that we have today. And these human beings, 100% of humans were in the continent of Africa. Now over this long period of time, 200,000 years, if we were to divide that in half, at the 100,000 year, years ago mark, then divide that into say 50,000 years ago, and here's 25, and here is half of that, and half of that, and so on. For this little teeny 500 years, this little teeny bit, of human history is the only time in human history that we have had what we call races or the idea of race. <clears throat> and that was created by white supremacy by European colonists who really wanted to uh, prove, which they couldn't, but they made an effort to connect visual clues with the concept of European superiority, which is, of course, a myth. Um, but for some reason, even after 500 years, and it's just been this teeny bit of all this human history that we believe that people are so different that they need to be classified by what we call race. Now, 100,000 years ago, everybody is still in the continent of Africa. Human beings are still largely in the continent at all the way up to half of this story of, of the human family. It wasn't until about 60,000 years ago that human beings migrated out of the continent and populated the world. So again, for most of human history, human beings have been in the continent of Africa um, about 60,000 years ago. And a large part of that had to do with climate change. We have to talk about uh, climate change, human migration, the ice age, all those things occurring um, 
up into this point to where human beings are starting to leave the continent and move around the world. So climate change, when it comes to the idea of what we call race today, it really is only skin deep, meaning that there, the differences that we call races are due to this migration and the climate change and just vari variations in skin tone due to less sun exposure so that people didn't die from lack of vitamin D, um, you know, being able to absorb more vitamin D if, if with lighter skin in areas where there was no sun or very little sun. Um, <clears throat> there also, so melanin deficiency essentially became a genetic mutation um, so that what we call white people or European people um, are basically just light skin or, you know, melanin deficient black people. And that is just because of this migration. So um, over those next, the past 60,000 years, then with people moving all throughout the world, of course, that's a long time. I don't think we can even hardly bring our minds to comprehend life a thousand year, 1,000 years ago let alone 60,000 years ago, when um, humans had very sophisticated tools, even like sewing needles uh, that were made from like fish bows and very um, you know, fine tools at this time. It was not what we would consider primitive living, yet it's so long ago that in our age of cell phones and YouTube, we can't really imagine or fathom like what life was like back then. It's hard to honestly even fathom life without cell phones, which I do remember because I grew up in a childhood where there were no cell phones. I actually grew up without a TV, so that was a whole other story. But anyway, so this last little teeny piece of 500 years, again, is when the oppression over race started happening. And again, race was created for the purpose of oppression of groups of people who were non-European. And even when it came to the idea of eugenics, in Hitler's hierarchy, there were, I think, 21, 20 or 21 separate tiers of what he called white people. But from a Aryan hierarchy, you know, down to what were uh, deemed the swarthy hillbillies. Um, and that was all European, you know, on a, on a scale of superiority and inferiority within what was deemed the European race. So I think that, you know, partly the idea of race is antiquated and outdated because it's 500 years old, which seems ancient, but also partly um, it's like there's most of human history where that view did not even enter the picture. So it's both outdated and also just kind of like an era of racism, race as a worldview, and oppression over the idea of racial, what are called racial differences, which account for skin tone and hair type and eye shape um, being tied to behavioral differences and therefore uh, associations with value. And of course, that completely erases the African origins of the human family. So on this board, I'll just kind of write for your edification um, African origins. And if you want to Google this, and I think with, with all the, the DNA testing and everything, right now there's just so much confusion over what race is and what continental ancestry group is and then what mitochondrial DNA versus um, you know the other parts of our DNA as far as mother's side and father's side um, <clears throat> and then grandmother and grandfather on each side and so on and so forth but we what we do know without even having to do ancestry.com or 23andme or any of those tests is that we all do go back to Africa. We all do go back to this continent. And if we could learn as a human race to 
appreciate that heritage to hold a reverence for the African origin of human civilization, I think that it would break down a lot of racism because the very idea of separate races, again, is based on racism or white supremacy and the need or desire to prove that in some way, even though Edis Foundation has always been a myth. So African origins, there are a couple books. Um, one is um, The African Origin of Civilization. And you can Google these books to find them. This is by Joe which looks like Diop, but um, that's the author. Uh, Joe wrote African Origins of Civilization. And then <clears throat> also African History by Kevin Shillington is another great resource for a just a textbook, kind of like a, a beginner's 101 overview. I would really recommend these two textbooks. I do see that there's like a ton of value in an African originated textbook about the African origins of civilization. But I also do think that they pair well together because African History by Kevin Shillington does have a, a lot of timelines, it has a lot of graphs, and it has a lot of maps and just kind of helpful tools to understand, you know, really like how all this sorts out around the world. And when it comes to some of the maps of migration that are, again, in the textbook, you'll be able to see that like even, even our idea of like what Europe is, and what like North and South America are and just the history of the world um, and populations within the world going back to the continent, you know, really makes sense of all that. Um, Shillington also talks a lot about like the first universities in the continent of Africa. Can, do people know about the universities in Timbuktu? One university had at the time um, the entire population of what would be London then um, was uh, enrolled at that university in Timbuktu. So there's been a lot of just erasure of African history from history courses. And until you get to college, you're probably not going to have one of these textbooks in your curriculum. But the good news is that everybody can, you know, self-educate now, look these things up, read these books, consider just in the back of your mind, this is our long history of being one human race since with the same size brains that we have today, 200,000 years ago, all the way up until this little, you know, somewhat recent migration around the world when some of the um, genetic differences in terms of skin and hair and eye texture or eye shape kind of took place um, due to climate change and migration. But then most importantly, these last 500 years that have been so oppressive over the idea of race, you know, what can we do to undo that old way of thinking, um, which is in the context of things a relatively new way of thinking, um, but it's outdated by now. It's been 500 years and we're still talking about the one drop rule in terms of what black is, is the one drop rule, which as you can see would apply to everyone because we all go back to Africa. But in the Jim Crow one drop rule, that meant if you have a traceable amount in, since the race worldview of African ancestry recently in phenotype that we are going to um, oppress you in America. That's what that worldview was attached to in the Jim Crow one drop rule. So I think it's time to just, you know, get rid of that one drop rule because the question is, 
why did that not ever apply to so-called white blood, meaning, you know, melanin deficiency, if that had applied there, like if you have one drop of European ancestry, you're white, then a lot of that oppression would not have even been possible because there was a lot of um, torture and rape and other things going on on plantations. And so there was a lot of mixture and nearly everyone who is African American today has one drop so-called of white blood or of European blood, which then, you know, the question is like, why can't people identify as white with one drop? Why is it always um, measured by what is called black blood, which of course we know is not a thing in terms of blood type, which is A and O and A positive and, you know, B and so forth. So within, within the spectrum, again, within this kind of like continuum of human history, Again, we, we did not have um, those questions that we do today over one drop of, there was culture, there is geography, and certainly customs and religion. And those are the things that really bound and bonded people together throughout most of human history. So once again, just kind of a question to pose, um, you know, how well do you understand African origins and what does that really mean today? And with the population now becoming more global, are we going back to this polygenetic state where you know, the continent of Africa is still the most genetically diverse continent on the planet? And in America, it's estimated that by 2050, most um, of the population will be some kind of mixture of what we have deemed racial groups, meaning that there will be no, you know, just black, just white. Um, there will be a majority of people somewhere in between. So if we're understanding that these origins unite us, that these origins mean there is value in knowing African history for every human being and that this is the motherland for a reason because we all go back to a black mother in Africa and that the, the whole race worldview has only happened for a very short period of time and really should be challenged and questioned and you know undone so that we can dissolve racism and move back to a sense of equality with, meanwhile, you know, an ongoing reverence for the African origins of human civilization.